Greetings YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I was, of course, busy all day today, which means that I didn't have time to check the forums, I didn't have time to check my messages, and so when I saw that Act 8, Chapter 1 was released, I thought, okay, well this is going to be an interesting thing to talk about for the channel, but also, like, is it going to be worth it, right? Because, I don't know about you, but when I think about clearing content, I think about rewards. And so it, it is interesting to think that we're on Act 8. Act 8! I didn't think this uh, game would still be gone. Also, one second. Uh, I have crawling almost on me. Almost on me. A huge bug. I don't know if you could hear that, but uh, I think that bug's dead. I've never uh, had to kill a bug during a video before, but here we are. <laughs> Welcome to Act 8, Chapter 1 of Marvel Contest of Champions, one that probably will, ironically, have bugs. It's been a little while since the release of Act 7, Chapter 4, and the conclusion of the Wild Saga of Gwyn Master Kang and the Superior Kang. We've been grateful that so many summoners have enjoyed Book 2 so far, and have gone on to become fully-fledged Thronebreakers on their journey through Act 7. But we're far from finished and not looking to stop, so we're pushing full speed into a brand new Act with Act 8, The Radiance. We've come a long way since we first started working on Book 2 back in 2020. With all the community's feedback and support, we were able to better understand what players are looking for in a challenge. We gained a deeper appreciation for trying to keep content more digestible and accessible. Applying everything we've learned, we've rededicated ourselves to making this new act bigger, bolder, and better than ever. But it's important not to get ahead of oneself, so without further ado, here's the lowdown on the skinny behind Act 8, Chapter 1, Casting Shadows. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Chapter 4 continues the successful quest format found throughout Book 2.1. One act composed of four chapters. Each chapter consists of six paths, or excuse me, six quests. Each quest is composed of six paths with six encounter per path. Three final bosses, not path dependent. One to three choice nodes found just before fighting the final bosses. That is all extremely familiar. Choice nodes return to give players a chance to swap out a non-knocked out five or six star champion for another in their roster. The freshly swapped in champion will enter the quest at full health and ready to rumble. Summoners will find these choice nodes after the final path fight, but just before the final bosses giving players a chance to swap in a champion better suited for the challenges those bosses present. Each quest consists of six paths, with an average of 23 nodes per path. Each path also contains six fights, plus the final boss fight for a total of seven fights. Total cost 440, 14 energy for completion. 2,484 energy for exploration. And in case you were wondering uh, what that was in terms of energy refills, 2484 divided by 70, and you're looking at just over 35 energy refills. That's quick math, y'all. The Power Hour. Before we start talking about the new nodes in Act 8, Chapter 1, it's important to mention that we've added onto the initial six-star supporting nodes we introduced in Act 7. We want to keep pushing the boundaries of what it means to bring in your top-tier champions in a story quest and also make it to where you're at. your five-stars are slowly irrelevant. And that means bolstering your highest rarity champs to make them feel truly powerful. Carried over from Act 7, Adrenaline Rush, the attacker gains up to 100% damage reduction at all times, scaling with their current Adrenaline. Adrenaline is gained after being struck. Hold the line, the attacker gains up to 80% block proficiency at all times, scaling with their current Adrenaline. Adrenaline is gained after being struck. I think that's awesome that that's carried over. Brand new, pulling rank 6 stars. 6 star attackers gain a permanent attack bonus based on their rank, Ranging from plus 100 to plus 2,000. That is going to be awesome. Especially if you're using somebody like, say, 6-star Hercules. Or 6-star Cosmic Ghost Rider. 6-star Doom, Apocalypse. You name it. Armed and Dangerous. Story Quest content likes to bring interesting new challenges to our summoners. And Act 8 will be no exception. Using what we've learned from Class Nodes, Superiority, and Paradox, we've come up with another set of nodes that aim to offer the engaging gameplay we strive for without overloading or alienating our summoners. We like to introduce everyone to WEAPON NODES. Look at those all caps. 
Weapon nodes are special buff nodes that give the defender a unique and dangerous beneficial ability, which itself is nothing new. What sets weapon nodes apart from regular old buff nodes is the addition of disarm and unarmed nodes. Disarm nodes allow attackers to disable weapon nodes on defenders by performing certain actions such as well-timed blocks, wall knockdowns, or intercepting. Once disarmed, the weapon node will go on a cooldown for a short period of time before reactivating. When a weapon node is disarmed, any effects gained or inflicted by it will be removed from both the attacker and the defender. When the cooldown ends, the weapon node reactivates on the defender, leaving the attacker unable to disarm them again for several seconds. Unarmed nodes allow attackers to deal a huge amount of extra damage while the defender is disarmed and the weapon node is on cooldown. Unarmed nodes are looking for specific effects or attacks to increase the attacker's damage, such as throwing special ones, inflicting damaging debuffs, or striking the opponent's or excuse me, defender's block. Opponents wielding weapon nodes are a little hardier than other champions on the quest map, so we'd recommend playing into the awesome damage bonuses of disarm and unarmed nodes for the best results. Lastly, there are, of course, a parade of new nodes mixing in with existing favorites, but we'll leave you to find them in the game. Where Poison's Welcome. Act 8, Chapter 1 opens with Karina attempting to re reassemble the Avengers. Uh, so find yourself a challenging Black Widow, Agent of Arboros. This new, brand new custom MCOC villainess is ready... Uh, by the way, is it Ouroboros? I just butchered that, didn't I? Ready to rumble with an arsenal of tricks and traps, capable of eliminating even the most resilient of targets. Will you outwit this shadowy assassin and emerge victorious? From rags to riches. All right, here are the rewards. Act 8, Chapter 1 features path rewards, completion rewards, and exploration rewards. Chapter 1, completion rewards. You get ha half a tier 6 basic and half a tier 3 alpha. A 6-star rank up gem. Rank 2 to rank 3 crystal, which is a 1 out of 6 RNG. 25 6-star six 6-stone six crystals, 20,000 6-star champion crystals, and 1.5 million gold. I mean, that's pretty standard stuff, right? Exploration. A 6-star rank up gem from rank 3 to rank 4 crystal. I love those. There's a different champion of each class that I want to take to rank 4, so that is exciting stuff. A 6-star awakening gem crystal. You can never have too many of those. 30,000 6-star shards. I think that's a little weak. Probably should be like 50,000, but whatever. 50 six star sig up sig up stones as in six stones one tier six class catalyst selector which is 14,250 fragments of a tier six class catalyst and you get to decide who you, you want your first uh tier six class catalyst selector to be used on i can tell you this mine's going on cosmic no matter what and three million gold Quest completion exploration, you got class ISO, path rewards, units, gold, tier 5 class catalyst crystals, 6 star shards, tier 2 alpha catalyst, tier 5 basic catalyst, and then of course next Wednesday is the release date. Final word, we'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who came out for Act 8 Chapter 1 Beta. Community feedback and support helps us stay the course on keeping story quests exciting, engaging, and exemplary. So, I am most excited for those of you who need one more, just one more, rank four, six star to become Paragon. Because this gives you a path to do just that with the exploration rewards. I'm not saying it's it's going to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. But there's a path for that. And that is worth celebrating. So, really excited about Act 8. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Kudos to Kabam for giving that rank up Jim Crystal back from Act 7 exploration. I think that's going to really do us a huge solid especially for you Thronebreaker players who are so close to becoming wallet breaker and i appreciate your feedback and support of my marvel casino of champions youtube channel